So you're all very welcome this evening to our in information webinar meeting on the new acre scheme. Uh, the audi audience tonight is made up of people that who have expressed interest in joining the acres scheme and sent in that expression of interest to ourselves in Chikask. So don't be wondering uh, if your neighbor is not on it, if you meet him or her tomorrow, you know, they may not have put in an expression of interest and that's why uh, they may not, not be on tonight's meeting. Because we have a big crowd. Uh, a lot of people expressed interest on acres between Kilkenny and Waterford. We have well over 600 uh, farmers and they were the people that were invited tonight and we have a large crowd on our webinar tonight. But just to remind you at this stage that we're, you know, we're aware that not everyone can make make a meeting on a particular night. So this meeting is being recorded and the recording will be sent out to all 630 uh, people who have expressed interest. So yourselves on tonight and people not on tonight will get uh, an email in the next few days of the recording of this webinar, which can be useful for anything that maybe you're uh, unsure about or was said or whatever, that at least you'll have it to look back on yourself. So that's just uh, setting that in progress. Just to pop up, I mean, acres, and I suppose if we asked everyone, not everyone might even know what the acronym ACRE stands for. So, you know, it's it's there on, on that there. It's the Agri-Climate Rural Environment Scheme. And I suppose the purpose tonight is, uh, you know, to ensure that yourselves who have expressed interest in joining the scheme, that you have a good understanding of it because it's quite a tight time frame. The scheme is only barely opened at present and the tentative closing date is the middle of November. And, you know, there's not that many of us on the ground and trying to get around to everyone. It's going to be a big ask. And to be honest, we're not going to get around to everyone. We think, uh, you know, we're, 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 it's not very unlikely that 627 are going to get in in this first tranche. But I mean, it is open again for a second tranche later next year. So uh, our aim is, I suppose, that when we ring up a farmer, and particularly after tonight's meeting, that yourselves at home are fairly clued into what's involved in acres, would have a good idea of what you might like as a measure to pick or measures to pick for your farm, and it will facilitate that and speeden up that uh, sort of consultation over the phone and the subsequent visit. And some of you after tonight might say, listen, I've heard about that acres and it's not for me. So it's an in information meeting tonight. Uh, and you might be choosing to absolutely go ahead with acres or for some it might be that uh, they think acres is not for them. But uh, whether or not it's going to mean that we're all well up on the acres when we're having when you're having that consultation with, with, with the advisor. So, I mean, just just a couple of things to say at the outset before I introduce tonight's meeting. We'll draw up the acres plans for for the current clients that have expressed interest insofar as, uh, you know, uh, we can get around to people. We've had uh, a lot of applications in by about the 20th of August. We'd certainly be happy enough uh, that we, we, we'd get to those. But once you start moving into those September applications, uh, some of them may be certainly waiting for the second tranche. And, and, you know, if people know of someone else there that if they come in late does that would, would, would do it up, that's absolutely fine. We, we just couldn't guarantee those late applications. Uh, we'd accept the request to draw up acres plans in order of the acre support request. So that's the way we're doing it in the office. And to be fair to people, you know, that 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 seems the, the more reasonable way people that are in first with the expression of interest will be ringing those up first to see uh, are they going ahead or what measures they want to do. And, and remember at the end of the day, when your acres plan is done up and submitted, that's no guarantee of admission to the scheme. That's up to the Department of Agriculture. But the thinking is that, um, with the volume uh, of applications that they're probably receiving that short window, that there should be enough space for, for most plans. But again, it's it's up to the department. And payment to Chagas then, or whoever you're getting it done with, for the acres plans obviously will be required uh, before submission. So that's the only slide I had up. I'm going to ask our speakers maybe to turn on the cameras while I just maybe introduce the format for tonight's meeting. And it's a fairly simple format, right? We have three speakers uh, to go through the, the different angles uh, within Acres. Our first speaker, and we're delighted to have her, is Catherine Keena, who's 
the national expert on acres and uh, is going to be putting in an extremely busy shift from now till till the end of this year at the very least. So we're delighted to have Catherine. And Catherine's going to explain the general acre scheme. And, and I use the word general because that is sort of probably one tranche of acres and the main tranche of acres might be the general acre scheme over this part of the, the countryside. And Catherine will go to that with a particular emphasis on grassland uh, farms and, and uh, measures that they can pick. Then we have Mark Trimble, our local tillage advisor here in, in Kakenny. And Mark is going to look at from a tillage farmer's perspective there, what measures that uh, a tillage person could avail of uh, to enter into the acre scheme. And, and, you know, it's quite attractive, I think, for tillage farmers. But look, when Mark goes through it, it's up to yourself to weigh up, uh, does it suit, suit your farm? And then our third speaker then, we have Katrina Foley, who's in the Dungarvan Chagask office. And Katrina is going to cover the CP or the cooperation projects. Now, the cooperation projects are designated uh, in various parts of the country. There are none in Kilkenny, but there is one in Waterford in the Cumberland Mountains. So that's why we're covering that tonight. And Katrina has a lot of interest in that there. So we're going to hand over to her as the third speaker to go through that. The other thing I would say, just to remind you, it is being recorded. And secondly, there is a Q&A function if you see in the bottom of the screen there. And if you have any questions uh, going through any of the pre presenters' uh, talks, by all means, type in the question there and we'll hope to get to those questions. And like any new scheme, we have plenty of questions ourselves and we mightn't have all the answers, but we'll do our best to give you the answer. We have the right people on screen tonight. If there's an answer there, they'll have it. So maybe at this stage, I might ask our first speaker, uh, Katrin Keena to, to come on board and I, I log off there and, and ask our other speakers to log off and I'll hand over to Katrin to go through maybe for 15 or 20 minutes the general acre scheme and we take a couple of questions so over to you Katrin. Oh thanks very much Um, thank you Terry for inviting me Um, so I am going to concentrate on a few uh, grassland examples the first one being old grassland and what we mean by that is grassland that has little or no ryegrass. They, officially, they allow 30% ryegrass. But if you're arguing over whether it is 20 or 25 or 30, I think we're in trouble. So we're talking about old grassland that probably hasn't been receded. Um, so there are a couple of measures for that. Uh, there's what we're calling the leg low input grassland. And that is results based. I'll explain that in a moment. Um, and you can get 10 hectares of that. And the results base meaning means that the payment will depend on the result. But as long as you get a score of four, you will still get 250 euro per hectare. So uh, for all grassland, it, it, it may score that. We'll talk about more in a minute. Or the other measure is extensively grazed pasture. And that's an action based one, similar to what we would have had in uh, Gloss before. And you can have 10 hectares of that and that's 200 euros per hectare. OK, so the first action, I think, for people with grassland is to work out. Is there a, a, are they going to fit into these? Because these are very obvious measures if they suit uh, the grass margins is another one that um, there is money in that. Uh, for fencing off uh, margins around the ditch. So the old grassland, again, if it's flowery, if there's lots of flowers there in the summer, it will get more money. It can get up to 450 euros per hectare, but the flowers need to be there. Um, if there's a watercourse present, we'd be tending to go for watercourse margins. Um, and if, there, if the stocking rate is over 130, kilos per hectare we do need the grass margins they give you a, a leg up into a higher priority tier um so let's just go through show you some of the pictures so for the low input grassland the one that where the it depends on how it's scored um the you can get up to 400 euro per hectare the, the field will be assessed next summer so you're putting it in now, but we won't because the flowers are gone at this stage. Um, so if if 
the um if the flowers are there next summer uh, as in that picture it would score extremely highly you could get up to the 400 euros per hectare there's not much of that around um and you can even get a, an extra 50 euros per hectare if mown in late july that's the late mowing bonus um it's scored to determine payment um, so that's the new one. I suppose only farmers who were in REAP last year will understand um, that angle of it. So it's it's a, it, this is the very new one now to farmers who would who would be coming out of glass. And again, the pictures tell it all. The the grassland on the left, they're both maybe all grassland, but the one on the left will score high because it has um, the flowers both in numbers of different species and the cover. So that would be a high scoring uh, grassland. Again, not very common, okay? Um, however, you can still get a score um, on, on it if it's, not, if it's not flowery. The other measure, measure then is the extensively grazed pasture. And this is not scored. This is an action-based measure. And the action you get, if you undertake to do this, and you, you will get 200 euros per hectare per year for the five years. Um, so just to go through the rules on this one, because this will probably be the most popular if it suits you. If you have, as I said, go back to the less little or no ryegrass, um, the rules then you must make sure that you're happy with these rules. And because it's such an important one, we'll, we'll just go through each of the rules. You must have a grazing enterprise of owned livestock. So you can't be just taking in cattle. You're, for the five-year contract, no ploughing, cultivating, reseeding or drainage, no mowing or topping between the 15th of March and the 1st of July, uh, but you can mow it or top it after that. The maximum nitrogen is 40 kilos of nitrogen per hectare. That includes both bag fertiliser and slurry. No pesticides or herbicides except, except spot spraying, noxious weeds or invasive alien species. Rushes, if it is a rushy field, they can be controlled by topping, grazing, weed wiping or spot spraying after the 1st of July. So no band spreading, no band spraying. But important point here that, that some people may not like is that you can only uh, treat 50% of the field by either topping, weed wiping or spot spraying in any one year. Another important point is where this if you choose this action, uh, water courses must be fenced unless there's a natural barrier there, at least one and a half meters from the top of the bank when bovines are present. Drinking points are not permitted. So again, that may be a problem. There's a hedgerow requirement to allow the hedges in those fields to grow up a little. I don't think that will cause a problem for anybody. No silage feeding, um, hay to sheep is okay. So there, this is a rules based one. OK, so if you're happy with those rules and you have less than 30 percent ryegrass in the field, you can get your 200 euros per hectare and you can get 10 hectares of that. That, again, would be the most similar, I think, to what, what farmers may have had in glass um, in lip. And again, the old grassland, the first example I showed was where you had a lot of old grassland and you put it in for the two, the two 10 hectares, the 10 of league and the 10 of extensive grazed pasture. Um, many people, if you, you know, again, there's a min and max for each uh, measure. And that's very important to look at. My examples are only just uh, pulled out of the air. Uh, I've usually used the maximums just to kind of put a spotlight on how much money, the most money you can get for e each measure. The, what you do will be totally up to what you want to do. You may just have a couple of hectares, but with the extensively grazed pasture, the most you can get out of that is your 2,000 euros. So you will be looking at other measures then. And, you know, hedges are paying well, and there are a lot of hedges. The, the, uh, there's a huge area there of 750 metres allowed to be planted. The unfortunate part is it all has to be planted in at the one in the one go, um, and it, it, there's a lot of maintenance there. So again, you need to think carefully. A lot of people like planting new hedges, you know, where you have big fields. There's plenty. There may be places to plant, but just be careful about the management. Um, it is good money. It is great money for hedges, but uh, are you able to look after them? Uh, similarly with the trees, um, you can plant up to three hundred trees. 
So again, I just put in figures there purely to get to the 7,000 maximum. It, you know, again, we would stress you do what suits you rather than push to the maximum. But I just wanted to give an idea because somebody who really loves hedges will want to know, God, how much can I get out of them? I want to do as much as I can. So that's just to give you an idea. Um, I suppose the, um, yeah, the, the margins, the hedges and trees are good for, for people who don't want to give over land to actions. Um, and for if the stopping rate is over 130, uh, we do need to do a minimum of grass margins. I keep coming back to that to get you up to tier one. But that's for people who are the more extensive, more intensive people over 130. We'll come back to that. So then um, the, both of those we've been talking about as old grassland. But lots of people have grassland where there is more than 30 percent ryegrass. So this is the this is the category then with ryegrass. Um, but there are I have I have divided the ryegrass people then into two, you know, the very intensive. And this one here is people who maybe are saying this they can they could make more money per hectare out of the scheme than they could out of their enterprise, or they may be willing to give over land, um, providing it's well paid. Um, number one for for the biodiversity and, and uh, water course and, and climate value, providing you're paid well, it's a very uh, it can be very lucrative. So one measure I want to highlight there is the management of grassland by water courses. So people who have water courses, there is a real focus in this scheme on paying you to either, you know, stop farming along by the river, either in a margin or in a zone. Or my first example there um, is where you're where you're are still allowed to graze it, but extensively. So we'll we'll I'll give go through the rules of that in a moment. But management of grassland by water courses, um, you can get 500 euros per hectare, 502 euros per hectare. Now that is only for people with a stocking rate of over 100 kilos per hectare. Um, but that's not maybe extremely intensive. So you could get uh, money for that and still um, I'll call it summer grazing with no fertilizer. But we'll, we, I'll go through the rules in a moment. The riparian margins are also very, very well paid. Um, all the margins are. So, again, if you if you have water courses, you you at least should consider would do the margin suit you. Um, and again, the grass margin may do. And because you have ryegrass, there's another linear feature there for ryegrass seed set. So it's just to fence off the ryegrass. It's a, to, to allow it to go to seed for the birds. Um, and the final, the other last example, oh yeah, we just touch on this management of intensive grassland by water course. Now, when we say intensive, it doesn't particularly have to be ryegrass. There's no specification other than that the farm has to have a stocking rate of over 100. So this is one some people are, are identifying as a as a real money winner around water courses um, because you are still grazing it. So we'll, I'll just run through the rules for this one because it could, it'll, you'll either decide, yes, it's for me, I'll think of it or not. Um, no grazing between October and March. But in other words, you can graze it between March, 15th of March and the end of September. So while I call it summer grazing, it's really most of the year grazing, but it's just not grazing it at the, the end of the year when you know land by water courses can be under pressure. No machinery operations between April and June, no reseeding or drainage, no chemical or organic fertilizer. That's the big one there. No pesticides or herbicides except for except for noxious or invasive weeds. No drinking access to water courses. Uh, fenced one and a half meter if no natural barrier. And the hedge management again to allow the hedges if they are low to grow up. Uh, now, very important, it's only on farms with a stocking rate of 100 kilos uh, of nitrogen per hectare on parcels uh, next to a water course that appears on the computer. But that's kind of the normal main water courses are there and it has to be declared as grassland. So for 500 euros per hectare, are you interested in, in farming your land by the river with no fertilizer and only grazing between the 15th of March and the end of September. That's the question to be asked. Now for the intensively managed grassland, um, where they really don't want to take out any um, too much land, they uh, probably maximize the new hedges and the trees, uh, the grass margin. Again, we'd be putting in a bit there because for the farmer, again, over, over the 130 kilos, the intensive farmer, 
really must do 500 meters of a margin to increase their chances of getting into the scheme. I have a thousand meters in there. And, then, and again, a different size. You can do all choices of the margins um, and the ryegrass seed set is there. So I'll just go through some of the examples. Again, just not to forget, we won't dwell on these ones, but just in case anybody has dry stone wall maintenance, that's there. You're paid well for that if you have them. Um, now, just to come back to the margins, because this is a really, really, um, I think everybody will be doing some element of margins. And there's a huge suite of choices. You know, you can do your grass margins, um, different widths, two, three, six meters. Um, if they're a if they're by a river, the riparian one, again, one and a half, three, six meters, and then the arable ones go on the arable ones go uh, wider, uh, up to eight meters. So if you look, and I know it's probably a, a, a not the way to do it, but if you look at the payment per hectare, there is a massive payment per hectare for land taken out of production. And when you think about it, the, 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 this land is the least productive. It's the bit by the river, it's the bit by the hedge. Um, now the payment per hectare obviously is, it, it takes a lot of meters to make it up. So I suppose if you are, but if you're not making money on your, or a lot of money on your per hectare at the moment, um, again, the grass margin, I would be going for the wider one possibly, uh, because there'll be less fencing involved, but to get your, your um, you know, to get your your two and a half to get to, you know, three and a half thousand, you could get three and a half thousand euros per hectare or sorry, three and a half thousand euros per year by fencing off six meters away from all your hedges. That's just an example. Uh, now, there'll be a fencing cost there, but I think it will stand to you. The margins are particularly they're linear through the countryside. They're really important networks for nature and um, they protect the, the hedge and the water course, etc. Um, and I think they are going to be very valuable in the future on a farm, in particular, in a, a farm with rye grass where the farm, where the grass in the middle of the field is managed, where the flowers aren't allowed to go to grow or flower or the grasses don't go to seed. Uh, hedges, planting new hedges, as I said, well paid, 529 euros per metre uh, per year for the five years. And you can do up to 750 metres, which is a lot. Uh, hedgerow rejuvenation, uh, the coppicing, and again, we, the coppicing does mean cut right down to the base, done right at a slope there, the 287 euros per metre. The laying is a lot more intensive. It's a beautiful job, uh, paid very well, but must be done right. And there's a lot of spotlight on hedges at the moment. And uh, I would not undertake either of these measures unless they're going to be done um, very well, because there, there's a lot of quite, you know, there's worry over doing harm. You can do more harm than good. But done right, they're very good measures. Again, trees, a uh, number of options with trees, um, either in lines or individual or groups. There's trees around the farmyard for ammonia capture. There's also trees in the riparian margin um, for, uh, for another measure. So there's a lot of, I suppose everybody might do some trees is what I'd be saying. And uh, you, you pick what suits you on the trees side. Lovely measure, not huge money because we're only talking about 10 trees, but it's one. And again, when the advisor is out going through all the measures, it's hard to go through about 30 measures. So just take note tonight. Would you like a, a traditional Irish orchard? It's a lovely thing to have. Um, as I said, it's a small measure on a farm and um, people who have it tend to love it. it. We are talking about the traditional varieties. We're not talking about um, going by an, a, a normal apple tree. These are the old varieties that are you'd be probably trying to pick into some lovely Kilkenny ones um, because it would have been a, a bit of an, uh, uh, an area for, for growing apples. Uh, so traditional varieties up to 10 trees. OK. Uh, rare breeds, I think to me, you're either into them or you're not. You have them or you don't have them. Um, there's two new breeds there this year, the Drimmon and the old Irish goat, which I haven't got my pictures in yet, and all the existing ones. So if you have rare breeds, they give you priority in and you get paid for them. Barn owl box. Um, I think this is an area where there are barn owls. So again, it's an, a nice measure. Um, if you have archaeology, not very well paid, but at least to uh, it's considerate is if it's if it's money there, it's it's for maintaining them. It's not a huge uh, task or a huge uh, money payer. Low emission storage spreading is still there for people who are not required to do it under derogation or under other schemes. 
And my final slide, uh, because tying in with Mark, who's to come, um, but just to remind, it, it, he'll talk about it in the tillage side, but just to remind grassland farmers, this is the one measure they can do. This was a requirement in previous schemes and an awful lot of people did it. Some hated it, some loved it. Um, it is, again, if it suits you from a tillage equipment point of view, it's good money, a thousand euros per hectare. You can do three hectares, so you could get 3,000 euros if you have land to spare and the tillage equipment, uh, as I said, it really suits some people and others not so. So you're sowing a crop each year to provide food for wildlife. So um, still subject to change is just a warning that, you know, when we see the final, final, final terms and conditions, I don't expect any changes to what I've said tonight, but um, you never know. And I particularly to consider all options for your farm. So, Karamagi. Okay. Thanks very much, Catherine. That's brilliant. And I know you could have went on for as long again, covered other options, but look at you've covered absolutely the, the main and more relevant ones that uh, I think farmers would be picking from. So look, we might take one or two questions there. There are a couple of questions in, but I'm conscious of time, so we won't delay too long at this stage. I just see one question. I think you more or less answered it uh, later on in the slide. Just someone asking there about a water course. What's the definition of a water course, and where can I find out if I'm in that catchment area? Yeah, there's a there's a number of different uh, water courses, and really, ultimately, you won't know until you the advisor looks on the DLAMS on the computer system. But basically, any surface water can have a riparian margin. Then, when we come to that grassland one, it has to be a kind of a more formal one. I expect most water courses that you think is a water courses will appear on the computer, but you won't know for sure until the advisor looks. OK, that's grand. Uh, Martin, have you any questions coming through there on your side? Maybe you're on mute there, Martin. Um, no, no, not that I can see at the moment. Um, just wondering there, is there a max meter with the slurry spread? So is there a maximum amount with the amount of slurry? No, there isn't. Um, the money would obviously be the max wherever there's no um wherever there's no meters cube. There's usually a minimum, um, I think, as before. Yeah. And just a question coming in there, like we will be sending out a, a recording, uh, the whole recording. So you will see those slides, etc. It will it'll all be going out. You'll be able to view what you're looking at today. So just a question into that because there's a lot of figures there that capture that you put up and obviously it'd be very hard for people to digest it with one one look at it. But it's to give you a flavour and, and we really would even people listen tonight to really look at it again. Uh, it could be a it'd be an awful lot more fruitful to visit from the advisor when he or she goes out to you if you have a very good idea of what's available and what fits for your farm. So look, maybe at this stage, I know there are a couple of more questions coming in and keep putting in the questions. And I'm not going to read out your name, Ratton, for a question. So don't be thinking that. I'm just going to read out the question. So look, maybe, Mark, I'd ask, I'll thank you, Catherine, at this stage and we'll keep you there for the end and, and, and take questions. Uh, I might ask you, Mark, to present your uh, acres from a tillage farmer's perspective and we'll take a couple of questions after yours as well. So I'll hand over to you. So, um. Yeah, so there's there's numerous uh, measures in the ACO scheme that are kind of specific to tillage farms. So we're, we're just going to run through a few of them now just to see what might be available there. Um, I think Catherine mentioned it briefly earlier that there is a, a kind of a tiered system for entry into the scheme. And um, the, the further up in the, the tiers, like tier one is the first um, the, the point of entry, I suppose. Um, tier two does apply from a tillage point of view. You can see there in the middle of the... The slide, if you have more than 30 hectares of arable crops, you qualify for, for tier two. So that will, that will getting into tier two will, will guarantee entry pretty much uh, into the scheme. Now, what you, you do have to do, one of, the, one of the measures that are listed underneath there, you have to do either uh, 10 hectares of min till, uh, six hectares of catch crops, uh, four of overwinter stubble or the, the uh, grass margins, 500 meters. But... Uh, I suppose, in all honesty, if you're if you're a tillage farmer and going into the scheme, you'll you'll probably be doing either the the min till or the catch crops anyway. So that kind of uh, takes care of itself there, really. So some of the 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 measures that are there then, um, like a lot of tillage farmers were in glass and would be familiar with some of these, and and they are they are uh, a rollover, I suppose, from glass. They're they're back again, and uh, the first one here is is one of them that was fairly widespread. 
uh, in gloss weaver or catch crops. And so you're you're basically you're sowing a, a crop here or establishing a crop to uh, to to reduce nutrient leaching in the in the autumn after the harvest. So your 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 um your cereal that's been growing there to be maybe some residual nitrogen in the soil and this this uh, catch crop will use up any of that that's that's left over. So it has to be uh, uh, declared as arable on the BPS uh, in each year the plot and then you you establish the catch crop using a non-inversion so no plowing allowed and it has to be done before the 15th of September so the, the I suppose the most common way of doing this would be your 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 disc and uh, a lot of these uh, uh, disc arrows now have a like a cedar mounted on them so it's it's a one pass operation uh, where the the seed can be uh, sown and the, the ground prepared in, in the one pass so as a maximum of 20 hectares of uh, catch crops can be sown and the payment there is 173 euro 20 per hectare so there's a nice payment there for uh for for putting in your 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 20 hectares and uh now there is a change from gloss in the grazing this isn't confirmed yet now but uh the grazing is not until the first of january whereas i think it was the first of december in gloss uh, and it can be grazed from that point onwards Okay, so the second one again, one, one from Gloss uh, Mintill. Um, again, this is establishing a tillage crop using Mintill techniques, um, basically not plowing uh, to establish the, the crop. So um, there's a maximum area for payment here of 50 hectares, and it would be encouraged, I suppose, in some in fields that maybe have, have these uh, uh, flow paths for, to, to water courses. And it's it's a whole parcel action, and you you select the area at the start of the the plan, and uh, and that area is kept then for the duration of the plan, and the payment there are forty euros per hectare. So uh, that's that's again a, a nice payment can be picked up there for for um for fifty hectares of of min till. So the next one, Catherine touched on it there at the end of her presentation, the the winter bird food plot. Or, or wild bird cover as it was known in the past. But I suppose the, the addition here to this one is that there's there's the option of putting a, a bird food, food strip in as well as your plot. So the, like Catherine said, the plot is, is there a maximum of three hectares, thousand euros per hectare. So a nice payment there. And um, you, you establish it uh, in, in late in the spring and it le you leave it in place uh, through the autumn and winter until the 15th of March the following year. And uh, it's, it's obviously to provide uh, food for birds over that winter period. So the, the winter bird food strip, then you can have a six or an eight meter uh, winter bird food strip along a boundary. And uh, this, this kind of works well with grass margins. And um, it, it might be suitable for some areas where you maybe don't want to go for the whole, for the whole field for the, um, for the for the uh, wild bird cover or the the bird food and again the payments you can see them there at the bottom of the screen are fairly fairly good for that as well uh grass margins again um these would be like a, a as you can see there a, a margin either one of those three four widths three four six or eight meters along a a field boundary or indeed it can be in a in a large arable field I mean, it can be down the middle of the field and um, it can it can work well in that case for 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 cover for for birds, especially after after the harvest. So um, you need to sow a grass mix in this margin uh, before the fifteenth of May, and uh, it has you have to cut it then annually in the in the autumn. And uh, this one helps getting into year, tier two as well. So you can see there the payments uh, they they are different payments from three meters up to eight meters. And uh, for example, there a six meter margin um, it would pay uh, uh, 76 cent per meter. So uh, if you have that along along one of your field boundaries, it can be a nice uh, add on to maybe the, the min till or the catch crops uh, to to um, to pick up some extra payment there. It's also very useful in, in, a, in a situation maybe where you have issues with with grass weeds. Uh, bromes and and so on. Uh, they these margins can can be a great help. they uh, being uh, offering competition for the for those type of grasses and can stop the spread of them uh, out into crops. 
So that, that could work well in that situation. Then another one that we had in, in, in Gloss was but slightly different um, approach to it, I suppose, in, in um, Acres, the uh, management of arable fallow. So this is, is the objective here to create a, a bare fallow field each, each spring for ground nesting birds and then uh, and also cover in the autumn. So the requirement there is to uh, cultivate the field before the first 31st of March or the, the area that you've allocated for, um, for the fallow. So you give it basically a, a run of a cultivator disc or something like that uh, in the springtime and leave it alone then and leave, leave that, that disc ground bare, I suppose, really for the, for the summer uh, period. And then in the autumn, then you must sow a catch crop uh, again before the, before the 15th of September. So uh, that would be the, the requirement there. So the one thing about this, I suppose, is a minimum of 1.5 hectares uh, is the area for this, this is, which is quite a big plot, I suppose. Uh, uh, but the payment is, is good there, 1,047 euros per hectare. So I suppose if there's a, maybe a marginal couple of acres, everybody has them, uh, in some part of your farm, this could be could be uh, a good option to uh, to put in there, and um, it, it, a good payment available. Uh, over winter stubble, then this one is is yeah, it's it's uh, pretty straightforward really. You just um, after following the harvest of a, a cereal crop or rape or linseed indeed, uh, cultivate the soil to to encourage the green cover to to come. And um, again, there's a maximum of 50 hectares available here. And the, the, the stubble, this is only really suitable for, for spring cropping. So the, the stubbles have to remain in situ until the 1st of February. And there's a payment there of 86 euros per hectare on this one. So that could be maybe done in conjunction with Mintil and uh, the, the, the payment effectively then uh, doubling up for those, um, for those, those fields that are allocated for that measure. Uh, unharvested cereal headlands. This is a, a new one for acres. Um, so this is, is you establish your, your cereal headland basically and uh, you're, you establish your crop as normal, but you, you just leave the headland uh, without any inputs effectively that the, uh, your cereal crop is sown. It can be either a, a 12, 21, 24 or, or 30 meter headland. And they're, they're generally the tram line widths that most farmers are, are working with at the moment. So um, the crop is obviously you, you sow your crop, you, you leave it for the for the season and then don't harvest it basically and leave it there until uh, until the first of February of the following year. So there's there, there can be, uh, you know, a lot of maybe unproductive headlands out there. And uh, there's there's a there's a, a good payment available for this one as well. You can see the, the rates there for the various widths, and um, so that one we we can leave that one then, and it'll it'll work fairly well, I think, in a lot of situations. Okay, and the last one then I think it is the the riparian buffer strips. These are uh, allowable in a tillage situation as well as uh, the grassland one. Um, Along water courses, as as you can see there, and as Catherine touched on, in the in, in the, the general the other general measures, um, so we basically leave a, an either three, four, six, or eight meter strip, or indeed you can create a riparian zone where the minimum width is ten meters, and uh, the minimum area in that one is 0 0.04 of a hectare. So that would be a be a, a, a bigger area, or if if it's more suitable, you can go for your say a, a six meter strip along a water course and um, this area receives receives no no chemical or organic fertilizer uh, it can be cut but not until after the first of september and you need to sow a grass mix in this strip or in this zone uh, if it's an arable field obviously there'll be cereal stubble there so uh, you have to sow your your grasses in there whenever whenever uh, whenever if you if you if you choose this measure Okay, so they're the, they're the tillage measures really, I suppose, that we've just seen there. So how would they fit into, a, into an acres plan then from, a, from an overall payment point of view? 
So this first example, then we've we've uh, on a tillage farm where there's no water course. So so in this situation, we have um, the environmental management of fallow, and you can see there in the in the kind of the third box across, uh, there's three point three six hectares of fallow uh, uh, picked on this uh, on this plan, and that gives a payment of just over three and a half thousand, along with ten hectares of catch crops at, at just over seventeen hundred. So giving a payment there of uh, 5,250 almost. So there's a there's a, a good payment there for, for those two measures. Uh, second option there, um, again, with no water course on the on the holding, uh, we're looking at more at min till and catch crops in this one. Um, we have a little bit of fallow uh, as well, three hectares of fallow, uh, given a payment of, of uh, just over 3,000. You're at 30 hectares of min till, at 1200 and then you're, there's 17 hectares in, in this example of catch crops just under 3000 there for that one so you're you're actually up to the max here in in this situation of 7300 that's the the maximum amount you can get from the scheme um and uh, so there's as you can see there it it, it is doable uh, from an, a, a tillage point of view um to get that that kind of a payment and then the final example here I have is, is for on a tillage farm where there is a water course. Um, so we have again, catch crops is going to be a fairly common one uh, across tillage applications, 20 hectares of catch crops. Uh, we've fa the fallow again. So there's, there's 1.9 hectares there. Your min till uh, would be again, a common one. And then you've, you've uh, a riparian buffer zone, uh, a 0.34 of a hectare. And that's given a, a top up kind of a payment there of uh, 520 euros. And again, we're up at the at the max there for, for that one. So you can see like that the the um, a, a significant payment can be achieved uh, on tillage farms by by incorporating these measures. And um, like Catherine was saying in the previous uh, presentation, there are are areas on, on farms which would be uh, suitable for for a lot of these measures. And um, it's it's up to each each I suppose individual to see what what suits them best. So that they're kind of the 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 tillage options. Uh, I just put that slide up at the end. I know there's, there's a lot of stuff there, but that that they're all the options that are available in um in in acres. Um, obviously, if you're a tillage farm, you're not restricted to those by any means. You can plant trees, plant hedges. Uh, indeed, if you've if you've grass fields, you can also go for for any of the grass options as well. Um, or or some of the some of the other ones like your your um, nest boxes and uh, and and that so that's that's pretty much it there Terry for the um, okay for the tillage situation brilliant um, thanks so, very much Mark for going through that there yeah plenty of sharing figures there. plenty of figures and options there again for people so just see are there a few questions Martin there'll be a couple of questions there to come in maybe for Mark. Um, yeah, so I wonder, Mark, um, do cash crops have to stay in the same field for five years? No, no, they don't. They can be rotated around the farm. Um, yeah, that's one, I suppose. And that applies to min till as well, actually. Um, it doesn't have to be stay in the same field. You you, you kind of, on your plan, you you, you commit to an area of, of uh, for either cash crops or min till. And then you have to, you have to, uh, well, certainly how it worked for gloss. Uh, is that you you picked it on your on your BPS application every year, uh, which plots you were going to put your catch crops in uh, later that year, and um, you can you, yeah they can go anywhere on the farm, and uh, just, you know they don't have to stay in the same place. No. Um. So two more questions there. Um. What do I have to sow, and do riparian zones in a tillage field have to be fenced? So okay. Two so, uh, to sow is that from a catch crop point yeah. of view? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, from a in catch crop, yeah, there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of options out there. You have to sow a minimum of two species. So you're looking at the, the most common one, I suppose, would be um, uh, rape and kale. For for the rape, you have to have a minimum of two. So that would be, I suppose, the the most common one or the cheapest. If you've if you've rape in your rotation, that's not maybe that suitable. So a lot of guys then would maybe go for your the likes of linseed and um, and phacelia, but it. it there, there's uh, a lot of the, the seed companies have have uh, have great options. They're up to three, four, five, and even eight and ten 
uh, species in a mix. So there's there's a lot of options there and it's a minimum of two. But after that, you can work away for as many as, as you want. And um, the riparian zone, yeah, about fencing. Yeah, no, you don't have to fence uh, the riparian zone or strip in a in a uh, tillage situation. You just have to sow the the grass seeds in there and um, and that covers you from that one. And those the one are there with the cash crops. Do the cash crops have to be grazed? No, no, they don't have to be. Just have to be left in situ until until that first of January, and uh, they can be just either yeah, they can be uh, spread off or or ploughed in or or whatever. No, they don't have to be grazed. No, no. Okay, thanks for that, Martin. And just I should have introduced Martin's the tricycle advisor here in the Kilkenny office as well. Uh, there's a couple other questions I might have catch us there. Just as as Katrina's maybe getting ready to present. Just catching there, uh, if you're still with us, um, a question in trees there, the Department of Agriculture said they have to be from certain suppliers. Is, are, is that list of suppliers available? Um, it's, yeah, it's, it is. I don't know if it's on the website, Terry. Uh, any, any supplier who, who has kind of a registered number on their invoice. So, in, you know, it's just you don't buy off somebody from the side of the road. Now, the requirement in, in acres is the that it has to be uh, Irish provenance. So that's the more important one. So most suppliers that you would reputable, you know, ordinary people who are supplying would be OK. But what you most important have to ask them at this stage is uh, Irish provenance, because we're talking about Irish trees from Irish seed. OK, another question there. The one and a half metre fence for the margin uh, can that be a temporary electric fence? Um, where you're getting paid for it in any of the margins, it can't. It must be a permanent stake. The only place where it can be temporary, Terry, is where you're doing the action-based extensive grazing, and you know where you're where you're where it's a condition of the of the action that you don't have animals. That's the only place where it can be temporary because it says while the animals are only in the field. But in general, where you're being paid for the action, like any of the margins, it must be a permanent stake, but it can be a single strand wire if that suits your livestock. Brilliant. And look, a couple of questions came in and, and I might answer here for the sort of fees for uh, uh, participating or entering the scheme. Look, our fees are not absolutely nailed down yet, but it, it looks to be tiered. A very small farm is probably a little over 300 euro for the application. And for the larger farms, it's probably up around that 600 euro mark. They're the guideline figures and they'd be uh, payable once the plan is done prior to submitting it. So that, that's they will be finalised. But That's the, 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 the rough idea of the cost. So maybe at this stage, Katrina, can I ask you to present there on the CP areas and we can open it up for a few questions for, for all speakers then. OK, so um, I'm going to cover the Acres Cooperation project with you tonight. Now, the Acres cooperation part um, of the scheme is still a work in progress so we don't know everything but I will tell you as much as we, we do know tonight. So there are eight cooperation areas um, uh, across Ireland. Um, there is none in Kilkenny and there are two areas in County Washford. So the blue here is the Cumra Mountain area and that is paired with the east southeast area. So it's all the other blue mountain ranges up along here and the Black Stairs and the Wicklow and Dublin Mountains. And then over here, then you see this small little bit of yellow that's Knockmeal Downs. And that is paired in the Midwestern Southern Uplands. So what the department are saying they have in around places for 20,000 um, participants within the CP part of the scheme. So does a farmer have a choice whether they're acres general or acres cooperation? And the answer is no. The decision has been made for you based on the geographical location and the priority environmental assets on the farmer's farm. So a lot of these areas, they have um, taken into the account the borders of the SAC, the uh, high priority water areas and pristine water. And that is what has um, led to the defining of the boundaries of the cooperation maps. How do I know if I am eligible for the cooperation project? Well, there's three different ways. You can go onto Ag Food yourself under the Acres Access Agreement and log in there, and there will be information that will indicate whether you are CP or general. You can go to your advisor 
who will have signed up to the Acres Access Agreement uh, on your behalf, and they will also see it in Ag Food. Or you can send a text to the department number 50124 with the message DAFM Acres followed by your herd number, and it will reply whether you're CP or general. So here's a map of the Cumra Mountain um, CP area. I apologize for the quality of the map, but it's a very large area. So it was as best as I could do to get it all on one screen. So you can see here the area of Dungarvan is here, Dungarvan town. So the CP area is starting over here uh, on the coast. It's coming up the Daligan River and up towards the Tay. It's coming over the mountains, Camarglan Mountain here, and it's taking in some of the good land here in Kilbrine. It's coming over here, back in and far along following the mountains. And this little blip here is actually Ballymacabry village is right just there. So all of the green land out along the Nara Valley is in the CP area. Over here, then you've got Clonmel. So it's not taking in all the mountains over Clonmel. It's just taking them in along following this line. It's going over here towards Ratgormach, taking in some of the good green land again. Then it's back following the mountain line until we get over here towards Kilrossenty. It's taking in some good green land as well. This is a map then of the CP area of the Knockmeal Downs. It's a much smaller area um, over here um, following the mountain range again, but there is some good green land here in the middle. There are the towns lands of Monalur, Monigorm, and knock on Gareth, just roughly. And over here then again, up on the mountains, but there is some good green land in there, Glenafala, Knockboy and Knockanask. So all the commonage, commonages are um, within the CP area are going to be scored by the CP teams. And this is the commonage um, scorecard that's going to be used. So it's very similar to what Catherine was describing there in the, um, the uh, the lip where you have uh, commonage gets a score of 10 not, or 9. It's up at the high paying side of things of 180 or 220 euro per hectare. And down on the lower side of things, a score of 4 will give you um, 60 euro per hectare. Now, if you get a score of under 4, it's 0. There was talk about a participation payment of a situation like that of 50 euro a hectare. But just because if you do start out with a score of 4, doesn't mean that you will keep the score of four uh, under four throughout the rest of the scheme. Um, there are actions that you can do to try and get your score up in these areas. Commonages that are under 10 euro or under 10 hectares will get a uh, payment of 120 euro per hectare. So how is all this going to work? Well, farmers in the CP areas can avail of up to 7,000 euro based on their habitat assessment. And then another 3,500 euro for landscape actions and non-productive investments. So there is the potential to get 10,500 euro between those two things. Now, you may be asking too much to go to the 10,500, but it is um, a voluntary scheme, so it'll be up to yourself. The CP teams will facilitate cooperation between the specialist local teams farmers, advisors, agencies and government departments to co-create and implement a range of solutions to improve the local environment and the viability of these high priority rural areas. And I suppose this is where the, the CP terms come from, cooperation, trying to get all these interested bodies and parties to cooperate together. The CP teams will also develop actions in 2023 for the farmers. They will assess the covenant for payments. They're going to train advisors and the farmers in these areas. Um, participants in the CP can apply for these investments or actions annually and some possible exa examples are nest protection, dry stone wall maintenance, pond creation, winterage practices, drinking point provision and water retention measures. So the habitat will be assessed in years one, years three and years five of the scheme and there will be an assessment uh, optional in the other years of year two and year four. The farmer can request um, that. Payments are ring fenced at a score of eight to start off with. So it's 300 euro per hectare for non commonage land and 145 euro per hectare for commonage land. The area is based on the eligible area. And when the land is assessed in the summer of 2023, 
the payments may be lower. And this is when the purpose of the landscape actions and the non-productive investments um, to do some of these things, they will improve the score and improve the payments then over time. So there are three categories of farmers with land in the CP. Now, bear with me on this one. The first time I went through it, uh, I had to go through it a second time to, to get my head around it. So category one of farmers who have at least 24 hectares of non-commonage forage land or 50 hectares of commonage land within the CP. So their money will be calculated on the full Lippus parcels. And these applications are simple for the CP farmers. They will maximize their potential payments within the CP area. So that's 24 hectare of non-commonage forage land, good land, and 50 hectares of commonage land. So far in the next category then is category two, farmers with all their land in a CP, but less than the 24 hectares of non-commonage or less than the 50 hectares of commonage. So these can choose any of these three actions uh, on the land within the CP to bring up their payment, traditional dry stone wall maintenance, low emission slurry spreading and rare breeds. That's all you can do there at the moment. And the third section of farmers is farmers with land inside and outside a CP, but less than 24 hectares of non-commonage land or less than 50 hectares of commonage in the CP. So as well as choosing any of these three actions on the CP land, they can also choose general actions on their land outside the CP area, CP area. And these must be included in the application this autumn. So the CP uh, company that has been awarded the project for both Knockmeal Downs and the Cumras is a company called the Hen Harrier Project. Now, the Hen Harrier project were involved with a Hen Harrier EIP, and that's why the name of the company is the Hen Harrier project. It actually, for here, even though the presence of Hen Harriers might be there in the mountains, it really actually doesn't have anything to do with the Hen Harrier at this point in time. I know that's very confusing. But um, the CP um, company, the Hen Harrier project, are going to hold an information meeting uh, to deal with the Comer CP, they're going to hold it in Bally McCarbury Hall on the 13th of October at 7.30. And for the Knockmeal Down areas, they'll be in touch with a venue and date to be announced, uh, hopefully soon after the Comer CP meeting. Padraig Cronin is the Deputy uh, Project Manager, and he'll be presenting at that. So, Gaurav Mahagod. Okay, thanks very much, Katrina. A uh, lot of stuff there. Um... I'm nearly glad we don't have CP in Kilkenny getting a bit confused and with those uh, options. But look, at, you'll be well able to handle it. Um, look, that's our uh, presentations for tonight. We try to go through them as quickly as possible. So if we have a couple of questions at the end, I'll bring all our speakers in. Um, there are a couple of questions there, Katrina, that were coming up a little bit earlier for yourself. And if you have any, Martin, come in with them as well. Um, there's one here. Can commonage land outside of cooperation areas be used for the planting trees general action if the members of the commonage agree? Mm. I don't see why you couldn't, but the only thing is who gets paid. Yeah. That's the yeah, one problem. Check out. Yeah, that could be something to check out. If everyone agrees, I, I couldn't see why someone, the department would disagree with it. But the problem is, who do you pay? So that's yeah. one maybe we'll check out for the next time. And there's another one there. Is it possible to have a riparian strip along a water course that is on a cottage if the cottage members agree? And Catherine, if you have any answers or angles on that from around the country, come in as well with Katrina. They're yeah. sort of, uh, you know, they're good questions and we may have to go back to get the answer for them. So I suppose just thinking of the, say the question again, Terry, it's a commonage outside the CP, is it? Uh, is it possible to have a riparian strip along a water course that is on a cottage if the cottage members agree? So I'd say you're right, Katrina. There is a difference there between with the CP project team can manage those kind of actions, and riparian is one that is mentioned. Yeah. Whereas if it's outside the CP, it'd be less likely. And the other thing then is if it's SAC, is the if the cottage is SAC, it anyway. putting up a riparian involves a oh. fence. You can't put up new fences mm -hmm. on. 
commonage within the SAC, it's an action that the NPWS have to give permission for. Okay. So there's a couple of different criteria. You need a little bit further information on the site. Okay, like so, we just throw it open there, and, and as I said, any other lads have questions can come in. I just read one one final one. I'll hand over to Martin. Then, uh, who judges or inspects to see what the actions have been done? Also, when is the inspection done, and is it announced? Is it an announced visit? I suppose that's the normal five percent of of uh, agri environment schemes are inspected. They try to inspect them at the time at the time of year time critical let's say if you can if you're not supposed to cut the the meadow i know that's a really important one before a certain date they can they will be checking the day before if you know what i mean so it's the normal five percent um of inspections by the department of agriculture to check that things yeah. are done i see another question there can i mid till and overwinter stubble the same ground 40 euro plus 86 euro yes yeah, that's that's no problem. Uh, they they work well together, those two, and obviously in a spring cropping situation only. But yeah, it can be done. And that overwinter stubble, you'll be doing that anyway. Is that right, Mark? In the current? Well, yeah, it's 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 uh, it's it came in this year under nitrates. The requirement to do it, yeah. So um, it's a bit of a a double up on that, I suppose. We've we have yet to see the the final draft of the spec, but it, it looks to be there. And um, uh, you if, if if you. I think if you join the scheme, you, you, your, your scheme requirements override any other requirements that are there. So, yeah, it looks like it's, it's, go, it's going to be in and will work. Okay. Any other questions coming in from people? I see a, a, a good question here, Dan. We might throw this to you, Catherine. Can you plant a carbon trap in an existing old woodland next to a farmyard? I think at the unless they're referring to the ammonia, the trees around the farmyard to, to catch ammonia. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, that may be. There is a yeah, there is a, there is one measure for putting trees around specified specific trees, but um around a farmyard and you get paid per tree. Uh, I don't know anything about a carbon trap in woodland. Okay. I have a two hectare field with a hundred meter river in it. Would a riparian buffer zone grassland? be a good option okay so that's a really good question because i think if you have a river you have to certainly look at it and you go from the riparian zones stroke um the zone is just an area and the buffer is the, the buffer is a linear but you go for them if you don't want to have any farming in the area okay so then you're closing the gate you are you are cutting it all right um or you can cut it and probably advisable to cut it uh, so if you're happy to, and you, the, the money reflects that, I think it's 1500 euro per, per hectare. Uh, and then you move out to, if you, if you want to keep grazing it, um, as we said, the summer grazing, no fertilizer option is what I'm calling it at the 500 euro per hectare. So you're, you're, you are still using it, but at a half rate, I suppose you could say. Okay. And it came up earlier, I think you answered it. Maybe a few of you did. How long is the contract period for acres? Five years. So you're sign, signing up to a contract for five years. Now, under glass, it was five years. Then it got extended to year six and year seven. We will not know will that happen again until we get to the end of the five years. But at the moment, what you sign up to now is in place for five years. Uh, a lot of the measures can't be moved. And some are rotational, but a lot of them aren't. So do make sure you put the right thing in the right place and check with your planner that if you think field A is in for this, make sure it's not field B, because if there is a mistake made, it cannot be changed. Yeah, and just on that, I mean, the department are not asking you, on rented land, the department are not asking you to have a lease done up, but they are saying to you, it's fully your responsibility to have that land for the five years and there's no excuse you can really offer in year three or four or whatever. If the land is gone, that's your problem and you'll be paying back all the money. So years ago, you used to have to have a lease for some of these schemes. That's done away with now. You have a responsibility now instead of a lease to have the land. So look, I'm out of questions at this stage and maybe we're out of time as well. I'll ask one more. What distance do trees be spaced out at the minimum size? 
is that in those? So the basic um, tree planting measure is maintain at least four metre spacing between each tree and purchase trees must be a minimum of 60 centimetres in height. Right, look, I'm conscious of time. We went over the hour mark. So maybe at this stage, uh, we can wrap it up. And, and I want to thank our speakers, uh, particularly Catherine for... Uh, they are asked for a lot of these meetings these days so thanks for facilitating those Catherine and our own advisors there Mark and Katrina and Martin there for fielding the questions so as I said we do have it recorded we're going to send out the recording to all people that have signed up with us it's a big list of over 600 uh, people our aim we're, we're going out to people from tomorrow onwards and have been going out Look, we're not going to get 630 people into Acres this year. That's the reality. Maybe 630 people won't want to go in in, in Kilkenny and Watford, but we're going to try and get through the first half at least and see where we are after that. The closing date is tentatively the middle of November. That can change. We don't know. It's a very tight deadline. Uh, you know, that's why we're saying that uh, certainly you know, applications that come in in that second half of our uh, tranche of applications uh, we can't be sure of those at this stage, but things can change and, and, and we'll keep people informed all along. So I'm going to wrap up the meeting and we will send on a record. And thanks very much to our big crowd on tonight and especially to our speakers. So thanks and good night.